Singing, James, is that competitive? No, it's not. If you can sing and I can sing, then great, you've got two good singers, put them together, you've got a duet. If you've got lots of them, make a choir, okay? There is nothing competitive about baking or singing. And in some ways, there's nothing competitive about surfing either. Hello and welcome to Popcorn Parenting, the show about movies, mythology, the Messiah and on this occasion, penguins. I am joined as ever by a reformed mythologist who is growing an ever longer beard in the times of lockdown, looking more and more like Moses by the day. Nate Morgan Locke, hello. Hello James. Today's movie is a bit of a, a, bit of a left field one, uh, mm. why don't you just introduce it? So today's movie is uh, Surf's Up. I always say this at the beginning of every episode, but I'm particularly excited about this episode because uh, Surf's Up is a family favourite of ours and I think a little bit of a, a hidden gem and probably the least watched film uh, on our list of films that we've had this season. Let me give you some cold, hard facts about Surf's Up, a 2007 computer-animated mockumentary comedy film uh, featuring the voices of Shia LaBeouf, Jeff Bridges, Zoe Deschanel, the latter of New Girl fame. And it's not a big Pixar movie. It's also not a DreamWorks movie or a Disney movie. It's Sony Pictures and distributed by Columbia. It cost $100 million to make and it took about $150 million. So uh, they only just about got their money back, possibly not once they'd uh, paid for all the publicity. It was nominated for Best Animated Feature at the 80th Academy Awards, and it lost to Ratatouille, mm. uh, which is a disappointment because I yeah. don't think Ratatouille is actually all that good. It's not as good as it could be. And personally, I think it's a tragedy that um, Surf's Up would lose out to after two, but they're not going to go. They're not going to vote against Pixar. In a world where penguins can surf, Cody Maverick leaves his hometown of Shiverpool and goes to join the Big Z Memorial Surf Contest on Pangu Island. Along the way, he makes many friends, as you might expect, and discovers some truths about life. And himself. Okay. So far, so generic. So uh, let's do characters first. The characters, um, Sheila Booth plays uh, Cody Maverick. And he's kind of this classic, cool kind of teenager, wants to be a surfer, lives in this kind of deadbeat town um, or lives in the Antarctic with all these other penguins. And, you know, that's the whole sort of setup. And wants to go off and become like his idol, Big Z, who's played by Jeff Bridges. And so he manages to get on board this uh, whale, which is travelling around, collecting the surfers of the world, and then they all descend upon this island to take part in this massive competition. Um, so Cody Maverick, kind of, he's your central character. Um, on the way, he meets Chicken Joe, who's played by John Hedder. And this is kind of classic John Hedder, sort of stoner kind of guy. Um, but he's from Sheboygan, um, which I think is in Wisconsin, and he's a surfer somehow. Um, but very, very chill. And I think in some ways the hero of the movie, really, when you look back at it through the lenses, which we'll think about. And then you've got um, Jeff Bridges, uh, who plays this big Z character, and then you have got De Zoe Deschanel, plays Lani, the lifeguard. Um, and then... Various other characters appear, including James Woods, who's the kind of big tour promoter of the, the whole thing. Oh, I love James Woods. He's very funny, too. He's Hades in uh, Hercules, one of my favourites. Yes. Oh, we have to do Hercules. We've got to do... I mean, that's we have to talk do about movies and mythology. So the setup is all there. Some great, great characters, I think. But essentially, this is a sports movie. So we it sort of falls into that category... 
And because it's a sports movie, it's about competition. And one of the things you'll know if you've seen any sports movies at all is that the competition is always a backdrop to another type of story. Yeah. So if you think about, I mean, the uh, Pixar film... Cars. Uh, Cars, yes, with its atrocious sequel, Cars 2. Right. And its slightly better trilogy finalist, Cars 3. But the the whole idea of the Piston Cup and the racing is a kind of backdrop to really a story, a story about overlooked uh, towns off on Route 66. So in the same way, it surfs up. Uh, the the Big Z Memorial Surf Off is the backdrop to this story, a competition. But what the story, I think, is about thematically is about pride. Okay. And obviously competition brings that to the surface and makes us try and think about um, our pride, our self-perception. What do we what do we value? How do we deal with, you know, success? How do we deal with defeat? Um, and this is clearly something that our kids are going to be familiar with. Um, competition, yeah. pride, humility. These are very easy things that we're to chat to your kids about. I've got to get into a little bit of a rant about this because the idea of making non-competitive things competitive really angers me. So okay. baking, James, baking. Yeah. It's not competitive, is it? Let's think. If you well, bake a nice cake and I bake a nice cake, what do we have? Two, two nice cakes. two nice cakes. Great. Yeah. There was one cake that was nice and now we've got a hundred percent more cake that's also nice, and can't we just enjoy the cake? Why do we have to go into a tent and weekly vote off the the cake that's seen as worse to get rid of that person and make them just feel very miserable, and then have to arbitrarily decide when you get to the bake off final, James? What do they do? Oh, it's so hard to choose. Well, don't choose then. We don't need to make baking competitive. Singing, James, is that competitive? No, it's not. If you can sing and I can sing, then great. You've got two good singers. Put them together. You've got a duet. If you've got lots of them, make a choir. Okay? There is nothing competitive about baking or singing. And in some ways, there's nothing competitive about surfing either. You ride a wave. I ride a wave. They're both enjoyable. Some things are competitive by nature. Are there not surfing competitions? Well, there are surfing competitions, and that's what's in Surf's Up. But if you think about it, it would be impossible for both both surfers to ride the same wave at the same time. I see, right. So they have to select the waves. Now, yes, they give points and all this sort of stuff, but you just think, boxing, that's competitive, right? It's it, You can't really do boxing without competing. Baking... We do baking without competing all the time. Okay. And yet we're sort of obsessed with competition because of the problem. And now now sewing. The the, the great sewing bee. (laughs) Sewing. Pottery. Um, The pottery pottery. (laughs) throwdown. That's it. Let's make this competitive. And it's not competitive. And And it it frustrates me. Okay, I'm going to add to your rant briefly before we return. Oh, good. Uh, is to say, OK, let's let's needlessly make something competitive that isn't. And now for charity, we'll get celebrities to do it. But celebrities who are good at one thing to do something that they are bad at. That's strictly as well, isn't it? It's just like, yeah, his this person is very good at telling what the weather's going to be. Look at them. <laughs> they can't dance. <laughs> oh, and now they've got slightly better over the weeks. And yeah. that, that, that is 30% of all television now. The types of people who are represented in this, I think, match up to the way that we cope with competition and pride. So you have um, Cody Maverick, who is desperate to be the victor of this Big Z Memorial surf-off. And you have uh, the tank, Evans... He's basically the ten-time winner, or or I forget exactly how many times he wins it, but he just wins every, every time, and he's he's a bully. And then you've got Big Z himself, Jeff Bridges, who in the course of the film um, couldn't deal with 
being knocked off the top of the uh, the pedestal and so then retreats from all competition completely in fact retreats from life itself in a way it sort of de- denies himself being a participant in the community because he couldn't face being a loser and then you've got uh chicken joe john header who just really doesn't care about the competition at all just loves his surfing just loves doing it he's your and kind of guy he well he, no i'm much more like big z i am some because if i'm not all if i'm not good at something james I won't do it. I will stay very far away from it so that I only do the things that I'm good at. So I never need to be exposed. Okay. And my self of, a sense of self-worth and um, uh, dignity can always be preserved. Okay. And that's why surfing, I think, is so interesting because I desperately want to do it and I'm really bad at it. So when I go and do it, I sort of have to confront <laughs> my frailty my inability and uh, the fact that i just look quite ridiculous being um surfing the same waves as 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 sort of you know grandmothers are sort of wading (laughs) through the same waters as i'm trying to stand up on a oversized foam board so yes it's i think pride is at the center of this competition is at the center of this and um I think it raises some really interesting questions for how do we as parents help our kids deal with not just success, not just failure, but they're kind of uh, the heart of the human problem, the problem of the human heart and our pride. Okay. It's also shot as a mockumentary, which apparently is, works very well. So Mark Kermode's review of Surf's Up was quite dismissive. Because he basically says, oh, it's a cartoon as a documentary. We've already seen that with Creature Comforts. There's nothing special about it. It's not new. It's what a been bizarre done thing to say. But he doesn't understand comedy anyway, does he? Something doesn't need to be the first at something to be good at something. Yeah. Why, can't, why not have both? It's not a competition, <laughs> hey, Mark. It it's not a competition. Competitive. But it sounds like that format works uh, quite well. The, the, if you watch the director's commentary... Which obviously you have. <laughs> um, they discussed the fact that they made that choice to make it a documentary. And the ways that that opens up opportunities for your characters to express themselves. So if you think, of, you see it all the time in sitcoms now with, you know, The Office, they would do it. or Parks um, and Rec. Parks and Rec, Modern Family. Yeah. And you, you're just, it's a very easy way to give some backstory and you're allowed to cut between things quite simply. What's interesting with this is be, they they do make the documentarians characters within the film. Okay. Um, and it, it also means that they can use some world-class surfers like Kelly Slater uh, to appear as kind of presenters on this kind of sports okay. cast of the surfing competition. Um, which itself has its own kind of humour and and idiosyncrasies, which are quite fun to kind of play around with, I think. So why are we as Christian parents going to speak about this film in a particular way to our kids? What is it about? uh, Take us us through a biblical Christ-focused lens of some kind. I think because it addresses the idea of pride, it automatically has something interesting uh, to present to us as parents, thinking about not just our own prizes. I've sort of talked about my own sort of preservation of my dignity and success, but also thinking how do we help our children deal with their their pride? So um, one of the challenges my children will face is that neither of them are particularly sporty. And if, you take the view as Big Z does that if you can't win you don't play then you 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 really you miss out I think on some part of life because sport can be really fun and Mm. I mean you don't have to enjoy it but but you could do so we would be discussing you know what is it about us which means that we have to rank ourselves in these in these ways and we have Mm. to you know winning is all all that matters um and there's, well, here's the thing. 
here's a way in which I think as Christian parents or as the church that we don't, we actually misapply the gospel when it comes to competition and pride. So we will say things like, um, you know, well, Jesus came for losers. And, you know, so don't be too upset that you're, you lost the game or you lost, uh, lost whatever sport that you were playing because it's okay because Jesus still loves you. You know, while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. So I know you're disappointed that you lost, but Jesus still loves you. I think you're, you're, well, what do you say to the kid who wins? <laughs> like, well, it's like, oh, my kid happens to be brilliant at sport, hmm. right? And how do we help him cope with the fact that he's just come back from, you know, his sports tournament with a you know, player of the tournament and a great big medal? And, and do we then go, well, uh, Jesus still loves you. Uh, he would have still loved you if you'd lost, but yeah. you didn't lose. So he hasn't really got anything special to say to yeah. you. Do people? Yeah, do people do that? I don't know. I, maybe it's because my kids don't do much competitive sport. Um, although my my daughter plays cricket, uh, so mm. so yeah, you are always trying to. You are always worrying about what happens if they fail. Especially cricket, <laughs> as they get older, is a brutal game because you're out. You're out first ball. You're out. Yeah, yeah, that's it. There's no second chances. Yeah, um, and so you're already worried for them. Mm on those mm. scores. Uh, so I guess in a way, to what extent are we projecting our own neuroses and concerns onto mm. them? And actually, if they lose, some kids, when they lose, don't care. Mm. Um, yeah. And some kids, when they win, don't care. Yeah. Uh, and, you know what I mean? I, just, it, I guess it feels like yeah. sometimes we need to have one message for all of them and, and we don't. Yeah, I think, I think so. If, if people have got children who play sport competitively or are involved in, you know, even things like playing a game of, you know, a board game or something, and they can win without caring and lose without caring, then good for yeah. them. <laughs> yeah. Um, my guess is that in the course of parenting, most parents see their kids expressing being a, a bad winner or a bad loser at some point. And my, my interest is to think, well, how does the gospel, how does... The truth about Christ relate to both situations, yeah. success and failure. And a phrase that we came up with, um, so my daughter was doing some, a bit of a song and dance, um, literally a bit of a song and a dance that she'd come up with. And she was slightly upset that not enough attention was being given to her in this song and dance. And that she then needed to be sort of comforted at some point. And, and the thing I, I spoke to her about was, we came up with a phrase, which was, love the art, not the performance. Right. Riding the wave and falling off, you can en still enjoy it. Um, going out to, to swing the bat and, you know, connecting with it and no one else really saw, God saw that. Yeah. Um, riding your bike, you know, round a slalom course through the woods or something like that, and no one else was around to kind of applaud you. Yeah. Um, that's okay. God sees that, and God sees the successes and the failures, and God's made us to enjoy these things. These are recreational pursuits, mm. leisure pursuits, not to be taken too seriously, yeah. and just to be enjoyed. And um the creation of things and the 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 attempts at the sports are there as gifts of God to be enjoyed in his presence yeah. um, rather than means by which to define ourselves uh, to other people. Um, so love the arts, not the performance. That's what we would say. Because kids love to rank things. Yeah. When my kids were a certain age, when they were five, six, seven, Daddy, what's your favourite this? What's your favourite yeah, food? Yeah. What's your favourite? And I yeah. say, well, I'm I'm 40, so I don't really have a favourite. Mm. Um, I like this, I like that, depends how I'm mm. feeling. But they want definitive yeah. lists. Yeah. What is yeah. good? What is bad? What's, how does, yeah. And they're figuring life out, and that's a stage, isn't it? But it's a stage they need to move on from. Yeah, um, and I, I think I think this is the big denouement 
Now, we like to use long words occasionally. Mm. The denouement for um, Cody Maverick is to realise surfing isn't about winning a competition. Right. So in the course of events, he ends up having um, some surf lessons or some time hanging out with Big Z, who's his idol. And he's asking Big Z for tips and how do I do this and um, can I build my own board? And there's a very funny scene where Big Z is, um, you know, trying to... <laughs> this is a really good one for parenting, actually. Um, there's this koa wood trunk that they find and roll, is rolled down to the beach. And so they, they start to kind of carve out a surfboard from this uh, this piece of koa wood. So they've got this, I don't know, they use a... a I think it's a shell to carve it out. So Big Z is sort of saying, okay, so it's just long, smooth strokes, okay? Which is good surfing mm. instruction when you're paddling for a wave. Long, don't little bitty doggy paddle, long, smooth strokes. So it's long, smooth strokes with the grain, with the grain. And then Cody Maverick's sitting there, just can, can I have a go? And he's like, yeah, just a couple more long, smooth strokes. So the big Z's just mm. keep it. He's like, um, can I have a go? And he's like, yeah, yeah, sure. Sorry, sorry, it's your go. Cody Maverick's just start, starts sort of, he's like, and then <laughs> big Z's just behind him, just going uh, long, long, smooth. And he's like, I can't do this. When you, <laughs> would you just give me a break? Just give me some. And then, so it's just, in terms of that scene, for right. so many of us as parents trying to kind of, we want to teach our child how to do it and letting them do it themselves yeah, and yeah. knowing that they're not going to do it precisely is brilliant. Um, but as I say, in the course of that episode or scene or, or montage, Cody Long comes to learn that surfing is about having fun in the water. You know, it's the most fun you can have nearly drowning. And... That is his big realisation for the film. And Big Z also comes to the realisation that just because he's no longer winning the world's greatest surf contest for penguins doesn't mean that he can't get back on the board and have a paddle round and enjoy it. And so there's a lovely, lovely little sequence where Big Z, Cody Maverick and Lani are all out on this secluded little bay and just surfing through till from the afternoon through till the sunset and just enjoying creation. And that difference, I think, that that big shift is very important within the film and really ought to be a way that we as Christian parents can think about um, competition, can think about the activities, the pastimes that we take our kids to be involved with. So loads of stuff there to talk about. One last thing about how you would access that. What opening questions beyond? Did you enjoy it? What was your favourite bit? My favourite bit was. I think because the characters each display between Cody Maverick, Big Z, Tank Evans, and Chick and Joe, they can each be described in terms of their relationship to the competition. The, it's a good question to ask: which of these characters has the healthiest attitude towards the competition? And Chicken Joe clearly is is the one who, because he's not desperate for the glory right. of winning, he's then able to enjoy every ride he he takes in the in competition, and then he's also able to enjoy when he's not surfing competitively. So I think that would be my opening question: Who's your favourite character out of those four? Um, how do they each feel about the competition? Mm. Why do you think they felt that way? And I think then you'll be straight into all sorts of stuff yeah. about. And what are you like about, with competitions? What are you? Yeah. Which of these four characters is most like you? Would you say? Um, and then really, uh, you know, we could just. There's lots of ways kind of into this. We could say, what does Jesus say about himself uh, in terms of his heart? Is he has he got a proud heart or a humble heart? Come to me, all those who are weary and heavy laden, and I will give you rest, for I am humble in heart. So there is a humility to Christ, who is the, clearly the most glorious one of all, um, which is what we've been made for. Philippians 2 would be the other place you could go to for that. So um, for Christ did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, 
but made himself nothing. So everyone in, in Surf's Up who grabs for glory actually mm. ends up losing it. Yeah. Um, and ev- what you actually need is you is we're supposed to receive. We were built to kind of receive the honor that is given to us rather than feeling that we, you know, we have to compete. Mm. We're in a zero sum game. I'm going to get glory and you're not going to get glory. And we've constantly got to battle against it. No, the gospel tells us that God gives. God is the generous God who overwhelms us when he gives us his grace and his love. I mean, one final thing, just in terms of the mythological elements of competition, you will occasionally find myths of, you know, where there's a big competition or some kind of great race or, or quest to see who gets it. But almost always those... Um, elements of the stories will be to choose someone for something else so it's like think of think in the old testament if you think of of samuel going to bethlehem to choose one of jesse's sons and he's got these all these sons and each one comes before them and samuel is told none of these but david and so if you like, there is a sort of a competition. Someone has to be chosen out of the mm. sons of Jesse to become the new king. And so when we get to replacing the old king, who's obviously Saul, and his pride and jealousy at David and all of, because he's not humble in heart. Yeah. He's desperate for the glory. He wants to grab hold of things and he doesn't want to let go of the crown once he's in that position. And then David's going to get, <laughs> himself into problems once he's been made king uh, because he is going to be counting his mighty men and as he numbers those that's when he's going to get proudful when he starts to take that which does not belong to him that's when he's going to end up murdering Uriah so we've got the idea of a competition to select a victor to select a winner who can then be given responsibility and glory and the bible teaches us that in god's selection his choice of his king he's chosen the one who is humble in heart um, to rule over all things to have authority and power not the one who grabs who's desperate for glory and who sort of craves um, these things in a way which is unhealthy it takes an expert reformed mythologist to get to where you've got to from <laughs> a mockumentary of animated penguins. But I think it is compelling and it feels like a real discussion that you can have because competition and competitiveness and all these sort of things, they're yeah. really big in the lives of yeah. your kids, you know, especially at school. They try not to mm. make it a winner and a loser situation. And it was it was yeah. much more winner loser when I was a kid and I didn't mind because yeah. I was a winner. I was quite clever. Um, yeah. although I wasn't particularly sporty but this is a really big deal and it will never go away because mm. no matter how uncompetitive they make school yeah. whatever it looks yeah. like there will always be someone smarter than you faster than yeah. you um, cleverer than you richer than you better mm. looking than you younger than you you know and that and just to to say on that I'm not in any way arguing for the sort of participation award yeah. idea all must have prizes. We get rid of all competition because I think there's something that can be quite helpful about people encouraging one another towards better and better yeah, feats. Absolutely. Right? I get that. So when, but I think my my concern is just when we're talking to our children, have we got a gospel that helps them when they lose, and that helps them when they win? And I think we I think we do have. Um, but the other thing, and and since. Um, I think this is the last episode of, of series one of uh, Popcorn Parenting. Not to undermine anything that has been said in ev- ev- any of the episodes, but let's not forget that lots of this is about having a good time watching a good movie with your kids. <laughs> so taking some of the pressure off, yeah. if you feel that you're putting yourself under huge pressure to have massively deep theological and mythological and philosophical questions and discussions with your kids 
just chill. Just that those things may come over time. The things that we've discussed about uh, Surf's Up as a family um, have come over a couple of years of repeated viewings. And I think that's one of the great things about kids' movies. If they're really well made, they can become family favourites and you can watch them several times. I find with my kids, if, if we ever have to sit down and select a movie, all four of us sitting on the sofa at the same time, it's disastrous. Yeah, but decide what, beforehand. You've got to decide beforehand. The other thing you can do, though, is just let your kids find you watching a Disney movie or a Pixar movie, or even, though there's only, Surf's Up's the only good one, um, a Sony uh, animations movie. And they will be drawn in because yeah. that's, you know, uh, one of the things that, that happens to us. There is a sequel to Surf's Up. It's called Surf's Up 2 Wave Mania. And it had barely any of the budget that the previous one did. And the gimmick was that the some of the wrestlers from uh, the WWE uh, became penguins involved in big wave riding. You should not watch that film. It was a straight-to-video uh, mm. option. Leave things alone. When okay. they're done, what they're done. What a great done. way! What a great way Leave to end them. this season on Toy Story Four. Uh, Nate, thank you very much. Thank you, James. Thank you for listening, everyone, and we will be back soon, I'm sure, uh, with more popcorn parenting. Cheerio. Bye bye. Why did they need to make Toy Story 4? All the first three were fine. <laughs> Stop it. And But Toy Story 3, my point is to say that that's a lovely conclusion. It's a beautiful conclusion. And that was a great time to stop it. Oh, baby.